What? Love. Me. Love. Yeah, you knew this review was inevitable, didn't you? <clears throat> How's it going, YouTube? The Bammy Man here is back with yet another Bammy Man audio review, the show where I talk about films that not enough people talk about, or in this case, a film that pretty much everyone on the entire planet knows about. I'd say it's about time to get down to reviewing a very, very recent movie that you've probably heard about. I I think it's a little underground thing called Mad Max Fury Road. The plot, for the few people who have yet seen this film, years after the collapse of civilization, the tyrannical Immortan Joe enslaves apocalypse survivors inside the desert fortress known only as the Citadel. No, not the one from Lord of the Rings. When the warrior in Imperator Furiosa, played by Charlie Theron, leads the despot's five wives in a daring escape. She forges an alliance with Max Rock uh, Tansky, played by Tom Hardy, a loner and a former captive of the Horrid Wasteland. Fortified in the massive and highly armored truck known as the War Rig, they try to outrun this ruthless warlord and his henchmen in a deadly high-speed chase through the vast wasteland. Now, there is a very highly good reason why this film is currently being held as one of the best action movies ever made. And I can happily say that even I much like the critics, find literally nothing wrong in this movie. The action, the writing, the acting, direction, stunt work, effects, pacing, and all other aspects are really, really on point in this film. And in the same spirit uh, as one of my favorite action movies of this year, Shaun the Sheep the Movie, the film practically is a sort of silent film with only a few mere lines here and there, mostly consisting of just sounds. Meaning it's practically told as a silent movie, which is a very risky venture for any filmmaker to undertake. However, much like Shaun the Sheep, it really works to the film's advantage for two reasons. One, the entire film plays out like a great Great adrenaline rush. Two, the actors in this movie work very well off each other, and they also do well at being able to convey their emotions in this story with their facial expressions alone. And, you know, it's very rare to find actors who are able to do that, particularly Charlie's Theron, who is fantastic. I mean, she just does wonderful at expressing herself as this lone warrior character put in a very tight spot at choosing to free these enslaved people or just going the other way and turning herself in. She's never let up with the pressure and is constantly on the run and move from her enemies. And it doesn't help though that she also has to deal with Tom Hardy as Max, who although while not having as many lines as Furiosa does, he also does a great job at conveying emotions through facial features. And they both just work so well off each other, it's 
fantastic. And I'd also like to take the opportunity to shine a spotlight on actor Nicholas Holt, who plays Nux, one of the henchmen, or sons, I think, of the main villain. Not only does he give it, us a great supporting character, but also is just one of the true hearts of the film. And it's an incredibly different, different and difficult task, considering he has to act under so much white face makeup. I think that's the term, but anyway. He does incredibly well at proving that side characters don't just have to be lame comic relief. Aside from the line you just heard me do a take on at the beginning of this video. To review. Still, he is incredibly good in his role. And also, I, I want to shine the spotlight on another actor that uh, pretty much only had a few scenes, but I want to give a big congrats out to Quentin Kennehan. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Kennehan has a, uh, has a sort of a bit part as a character named Corpus Colossus one of Morton Joe's sons. And while he only has a few scenes in the movie, I think he's one of the funniest and best parts. And when you see the film, you will know what I am talking about when I say, I really hope this guy gets more great work in the future. And considering most of the world has seen this movie, you could probably agree with me because he is just wonderful. And his scene alone is just worth the price of admission, even though pretty much the entire movie is worth the price of admission. But his scene alone sold me, and it's right at the beginning. Now, George Miller also did a great and fantastic job with the action at keeping it mostly practical. Every explosion and crash and stunt you see in this high-speed chase movie is pretty much real 100%. And it's a great, great time in this day and age, in particular, of digital effects to see a film with great great practical effects. One of the reasons why I love the nerd movies so much. And it's another good reason for why this film is being held as an action masterpiece. Now, for... If I were to judge uh, every single aspect of this movie, I would be here forever, but to keep it short and honest, for a full and honest opinion, I must say that I cannot agree with the critics more on this one. And I'd say this film definitely is deserving of its illustrious title as one of the best action movies ever made. It's well paced, well acted, and is exciting as all heck. And this is what insert Michael Bay production here should and could have been. It's an exciting, emotionally gripping, edge of your seat, thrill of a film that must be seen to be believed. It is truly one of the best films of the year. It's right up there for me with Shaun the Sheep the movie and I highly, highly recommend it on the highest scale that I can and I must stop saying the word high before the PC comes after me. I must shout it from the village of the hippos known as Hutto to the mighty gates of Valhalla. This is one shiny and chrome cinematic masterpiece. I want to say thank you for joining me, everyone. I'm the Bambi Man reminding you that if it's classic or crap, you see through it, I review it. Now, if you will excuse me. Son of a pain biscuit. Witness the donut powder. Witness it.